of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. We got to make sure the mics is right because the men of God are coming forth today. Amen. And we want to make sure we can hear them well. And we're just excited about what God is doing. It's Palm Sunday, everybody. With the time leading into the last days of Jesus' life, and it's the time where we recognize the victory and triumph of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is anybody glad that we have the victory in Jesus Christ? That he was willing to fulfill the prophecy, that he was willing to submit to the will of the Father, I don't know about you all, but I am so glad that he was willing to submit to the will. Every jot and tittle of the word, he made sure to fulfill even the riding on of the donkey. Amen? Amen. So we're going to ask um, Deacon Scott to come. He's going to open us up in scripture and prayer. And as he comes, I want everybody just to begin to prepare your hearts to receive whatever the Lord has for you today, uh, whatever scripture, uh, whatever the word is, that you would just prepare your heart to receive Deacon Scott. We're going to have him come, and we're going to bless the Lord. Amen? Amen. This morning, the word that God is coming from the 119th Psalm. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Blessed are the undefiled in the way to walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimony, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I looked into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteousness and judgment, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wonder from your commandments. Your word I have treasured. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open up my eyes, that I might see your wondrous things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul breaks with longing for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud, the curse you stray from your commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I kept your testimonies. Princes also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counsel. My soul clings to dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways, and you have answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, so I meditate on your wonderful works. 
My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove me the way of lying and grant me your law. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. Oh, do not put me in shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. May God's word sanctify, glorify, magnify your word, God. May your word that I hide in my heart, that I might not sin this day. Teach me, dear God, your word, that I might live by your word. Father God, it's your word that I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father God, we lift up the name of Jesus. We magnify the name of Jesus. Your word says that you so love the world. Thank you, Father God, for loving us. You loved us so much that you gave your only begotten Son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That whosoever yes. believe it yes. believes in the name of Jesus. Yes. Believes, worships, magnifies the name of Jesus takes Jesus and calls him to himself. For those who believe in Jesus shall confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus lived, that Jesus died, that Jesus rose. And he lives. He lives. You, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He lives. For Christ lives. We shall get to all the glory. Everything that's within us, dear God. We shall serve you and worship you. We shall do everything you ask of us. Call us. And let us work. Let us do your will. Because we can't help it. Because we love you that much, dear God. Father God, transform us. Transform Siloam. Transform our brothers and sisters, our children. Every ministry. Move in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise? Move in us, O oh Father. Teach us your statutes. Raise us up in the way that we should go. We praise God for his word. Psalm 119, that's I think the, the longest book in the Bible, but it is so packed with the power, the grace, the mercy, the instruction of God. And we just appreciate his word. Thank you so much, Father, for touching our heart and teaching us your statutes. We're going to transition now into our announcements. And as Sister Rachel comes, I see my name on here to do the first one. So I'm going to just do it while she comes. Um, so praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to... Um, so the announcement that I have been called to give is on Vacation Bible School. So I'm here in the stead of our very own sister, Alfini Mays. Hey, girl. She's watching online. And we don't know she had an issue with her knee this week, and so she is unable to walk and get around with ease. So we ask first that you keep her in prayer. 
but I thank you that God doesn't make any mistakes and when God allows things to happen, it's always for a reason. So I just want to encourage y'all, if y'all are not ready, y'all better get ready because one day we're going to see her run through this door and do laps around this church. We believe for her healing in Jesus' name. But I was asked to give an announcement on her behalf. Uh, she is our chair for the Vacation Bible School. The dates are June 24th to June 29th, but it's not too early to plan because time is most certainly flying. So I want to make you aware that the next meeting is going to be on April 4th. That's a Thursday at 6 p.m. Um, we are still in need of teachers, assistant teachers, security, and kitchen staff to help with serving the meals to the young people when they come in. Um, we are believing God for at least 100 young people to come to our BBS. And so in order to facilitate that, we do need your help. So we're asking if you have any interest, if you want to mention it today, you can come talk to me. But if not, when you see Alfini, if you have her phone number, please contact her and let her know that you are interested in whatever capacity. Um, we also want to mention that we're in the process of collecting the food donations because we want to be able to give the young people meals. So Sister Alfini has the list of items that you can donate. We will also be getting donations from the community, Wawa, Chick-fil-A, Domino's. We're hitting all the places so that we can make sure that we have enough for our young people. But most importantly, in true Sister Alfini fashion, prayer warrior fashion, her ask is that you would pray. Please pray for the BBS. Please pray for the children. Please pray for all those who will be involved and all, all who are going to be at the block party, the community, that they will be blessed and that somebody would leave here knowing a little bit more about Jesus and if they don't know Jesus, that they would ask, what must I do to be saved? And that they will not depart from that BBS without getting salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning, family. It is wonderful to see your faces again. I love it. As you know, it is Palm Sunday, so this is why I'm wearing green. Not because of St. Patrick's. Representing Palms today. In case you were wondering. And I think first up, I believe I have an announcement from Brother John Oldfield on the Easter outreach. Is that correct?
which is on 445 Burnside Avenue, again, just around the corner. And um, in their outdoor chapel, which I think they have. And the guest preacher for that is Pastor C.G. Coates. Resurrection Sunday service, right here. Woo! Sign up for that church. Beginning at 1030. Be here so that we can say Hosanna in the highest. The Art of Marriage Workshop. Just around the corner. I'm so excited. We have... Yes, we're sold out. <laughs> so if you were thinking about registering, catch us next year, okay? Uh, doors are going to open at 8.30. We're going to have a lovely continental breakfast. You will be satisfied. Don't think negatively of continental breakfasts. We will have a full lunch, so you will not go hungry during this event, okay? There will be candy, there will be snacks, there will be all kinds of goodness, and then there will be incredible video clips for you to watch that are going to encourage, strengthen, and empower your marriages. So please be here on time. Background checks. If you want to work with our youth in any way in this church or anywhere, it requires a background check. Now, this is a free process. It doesn't cost you one cent. All you have to do is either go online or download the application form and send it in and fill out your background check. That way, whenever there's something going on at our church in which youth are involved in, there's no hindrances or barriers to you to help. So if you could please do this, we would really appreciate it. And if you work with the school system, you've already probably done a background check. You can use that same background check. They just need you to send it into the church office. I did that last night. I had mine. So please do the same. Also, I wanted to let you know that next Sunday, Easter Sunday, by the way, Resurrection Sunday, <laughs> the balcony will be closed. And this is a good thing. Two, two part. One, that means everybody needs to worship together and fellowship and sit together like family. Praise God. The other thing is we're getting new equipment installed up there. Hallelujah. <laughs> now enjoy the rest of your Palm Sunday. Be blessed and I love you.
but because of Jesus, yes. we have value. It wasn't for Jesus, where would we be? What would we have? What would we do? We'll be people without a purpose, worth nothing. But because of Jesus, Yeah.
as righteous, but because of this sacrifice, we are restored to the relationship we should be in with our Father. And it's a good place to be. Amen. So God, we thank you. You are most certainly welcome in this place, and we also want to welcome all of you who are here with us in person. Good morning. All of those that are watching online, good morning. We want you to come on in the house. If you're able, get on in the house next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. We are going to have a praise party. Amen. Um, just a couple of clarifications uh, for the, uh, the announcement Sister Rachel gave about the clearances. If you are working with the youth in any capacity, whether it's teaching, driving, any any capacity, you need both your child abuse clearance and the background check. If you are not sure how to get that, please contact the church office. You can come see me, and it's free. It's very easy to get. You just go online, plug in the information, and it'll immediately spit out something that you can download and attach and send into the church. Okay, we want to make sure we are following the proper protocols to make sure our church home is protected in Jesus' name. Amen? But we also want to make sure that our children are protected in Jesus' name. So it's a formality. Nobody get all uncomfortable. I know as soon as somebody said background check, it was like, what now? I have to get a background check to come to church? No. That is not what we're saying at all. You don't need a background check to come to church. It is since we are working with our young people, we want to make sure that we have all the proper documentation. We will make sure, I'll get it to you after this. We're going to get you the website. Well, you're working with the youth, right? You're going to drive us around. That's what you said. Look at him trying to back out of what he said. He to okay. And for those, I know we just had some arrive. The balcony is going to be closing down. So as you can see, we've got lots of equipment up there now. We're going to be adding more equipment into the balcony, and that is going to become our efficient sound booth, essentially. And so what that means is all of our loved ones in the balcony, we want to fellowship with you down here on the ground level. So we'll have signs and everything like that, but next week you should expect and plan to just come down here on the ground level. I promise, don't nobody on your road stick. I don't think we're going to make sure we shower it, do what we got to do so we can sit close together. Please make sure to invite someone uh, out next week, and every week, really. Um, but we're gonna continue with the flow, so I hope again you all feel welcome. Uh, Minister Al Howard, that's what it has here. Can you come and do the off of the field, please? Good morning, Silos. Good morning. Good morning.
Father God, and we accept your blessings and gratitude. Amen. And these things we ask in the master's name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And we're now going to have our male chorus to come and render song. And the next voice you will hear after that will be very old Pastor Randy.
good day to pray. There's so much that you and I can thank God and praise God for. I don't want to be the only one. Suffers enough to tell God thank you. Because where the Lord is, what the Lord is doing in our lives is a marvelous thing. Whereof we are to be glad. Would you do me a favor and just look at somebody across the aisle and tell them good morning? speak to anybody, but just give them a wave. That would be good too. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's pray. God, we are grateful, thankful for the marvelous things that you are doing with us and for us. God, we know of a surety that if it had not been for you, and for you being on our side, we don't know where we would be. But God, because of you, because of your great grace, you planted with us New mercies every day. Every day. God, for this we say thank you. As the winds blew on last night, in some areas, God, the power went off. But God, we thank you because you're still working with us. Thank you, God, that collectively we can say you're good because you didn't call any of us home. The circle has not been broken in our lives. So, God, we thank you for having a home, a house, a, a church, a building that we can come to and give you praise. Not everybody has, not everybody has this opportunity. And Lord, we thank you today here at Siloam. Thank you for watching over us and keeping us all day and all night long. Thank you, God, do a marvelous thing here with us on today. If one is to perform, God, we know you can. Trusting that you will. And I pray now, God, for these few moments that we have left to let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, to be acceptable in your sight, for you indeed are my strength, and my redeemer. Let the body of Christ say, Amen. 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 This morning, I want to lead us in a word from St. Matthew chapter number 21. St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. I want to do something today that I don't normally do. I want to read from the, King, uh, from the NIV version of the Bible. Matthew chapter 21. Beginning at verse 1, the word of God. Would you mind standing just for a moment? For those of you that can. The word says, and they, as they approached Jerusalem, and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them 
and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. He will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughters of Zion, see your king come to you, gentle, riding on a donkey, and on a coat, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? Yeah. I want to talk from the subject that the Lord has given me today. You don't know who I am, do you? You don't know who I am. I'm amazed how the concealed written word found in the Old Testament is so vividly revealed in the New Testament. There are things that are written in the Old Testament are now being realized in the New. In other words, there are things that were told of old. Things that were told of old are coming to pass right now. Isn't it amazing that we are seeing some of those very things that were spoken of by the prophets we are now seeing them. We're now hearing them. We're now focusing in on those things that God is bringing them to pass. Yeah. Well, I wish I had a praying church this morning. Come on. Come on. What I mean is, is that in the Old Testament writing in the book of Zechariah, uh -huh. chapter 9 and verse 9, is that the prophet of God was foretelling the good news of the coming of the king. It was foretelling the good news of the coming of the king. And of course, we know that this king is named Jesus. And for all of you historians, this prophecy was predicted 500 years before it happened. This prophecy was predicted 500 years. That's older than all of us. <laughs> 500 years before it happened, it was foretold back then. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. So just as this prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus came to the earth, the prophecy of his second coming are just as certain to come true. Amen. 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 Yes, Can I just stick a pen right here for a second? Yes, if you didn't know it, and if you don't know it, Jesus is coming back. Amen. Just in case. I've got a neighbor next to you tell me, just in case. Just in case you didn't know it. Let me be among the first to tell you 
that he is coming back. <laughs> Jesus is 
show not a heel. But before we get all excited, allow me to give you a hint of what is happening, what's happening here in the text. Today is Palm Sunday. The day we celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The week before Easter. This is one of the most joyful days recorded for us in the scripture. Although it still does not match the joy of Jesus' resurrection. It's a resurrection that we look forward to celebrating on next week, Lord willing. There are many people present who witnessed that first Palm Sunday. Jesus was certainly there, as were his disciples. The crowds were there, along with the children singing praises to God and cheering Jesus on from the other side of the road. The Pharisees were there. They were there urging Jesus to rebuke the crowds for hailing him as king. I'm sure that if you stopped and interviewed the different people from these groups, you would get a different perspective from each one of them. The Bible says, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, which was the last six days, of the Lord's earthly life right here. Yes, Lord. Six days before <coughs> something was getting ready to happen. Well, thank you, God. I'm not sure if we really understand the magnitude of what these last six days led up to. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we really understand what your Lord and my Savior had to go through. I'm not sure if we really appreciate. Hey, that's a good word. I'm not sure if we really appreciate what Jesus did just for you and me. Yes, we all, we all know about Palm Sunday. Something that's getting ready to happen here on Palm Sunday. The Bible says, the Bible says that they drew nigh to Jerusalem. They will come to Bethphage, very near Jerusalem, unto the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two of his disciples, probably Peter and John, telling them to go to the village over against you. And immediately, immediately ye shall find an ass tied in a colt with her. Yep. Right then he tells them, loose them and bring them unto me. Yeah. So what is Palm Sunday without palms and a pro procession? Palm Sunday. Somebody say Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is supposed to be all about Jesus. Palm Sunday is supposed to be all about Jesus. Palm Sunday is supposed to be all about Jesus. The significance of Palm Sunday is that there were a mixed group of folks here. Right. Some, some, some who were 
yelling and saying, Hosanna! In the highest. And then six days later, six days later, that mixed group of folks was crying, crucify him. Can I stick another pen right here? The child folks will love you. I ain't talking about nobody here. The folk will love you. And I'm told. That folk will turn their back on you. Won't they do? Won't they do? They'll love you today. And can I tell you this? They don't wait till tomorrow. Turmoil is in the air. Turmoil 
is in the news. Turmoil is in our hearts. Today our world is in turmoil. America is in turmoil. Ours town is in turmoil. And some of us, we certainly feel the turmoil in our own lives. Times and times and times when you go out and you talk to some of the town's people, they will tell you that my life is a topsy turvy. <laughs> then I began to look and ask the question, why do people wave the palm branches? I asked that question because palms were considered symbols of peace and victory, but in the end, it meant something totally different. Then some had the nerve. They had the nerve to ask, who is this? But I hear Jesus saying silently, you don't know who I am, do you? Somebody echoed, this is the one that God sent. Because God so loved the world. Yes, sir. Yes. Somebody said, this is the one who promised where there are two or three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gather together. Yes, sir. In the midst. He said, they all will be in the midst. Yes, this is the one who said, come unto me. Yes, sir. Come on to me. All you that labor. Yes, sir. Weary and heavy labor. Yes, sir. He said, I will. I will. Give you rest. Yes, sir. This is the one who says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. Yes, sir. This is the one that says, do not let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be afraid. Yes. This is the one that said, I am the good shepherd. And he calls his sheep by their name. Not only that, but he leads them. He leads them out. But I want to tell everybody inside of home that this is what I learned years ago. And I echo the words of the prophet Isaiah. Surely he had borne our grief yes. and carried our sorrow. Yes, Yet yes. we did a stream and spit, smitten of God and afflicted. Yes. But he was wounded. I said he was wounded. Yes. Galilee in the northern part of Israel. 
and declared it in the great temple in Jerusalem. Yeah. Jesus has spent three years yeah. preaching. Yes. He has spent three years teaching. Yeah. He has spent three years healing good, throughout the small and sometimes remote towns of Capernaum. Mm -hmm. Not only Capernaum, but Nazareth and Bethsaida. Like anything else Jesus knew, he had to take his message to this great city of Jerusalem. But the road ahead always seemed to be pointing to a more critical site in which the drama of the story will fully and finally unfold. There's absolutely no question about the fact that the key to the gospel being able to reach to the ends of the earth that Jesus commanded in Matthew 28 yes, sir. was that Jesus first take the gospel to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Yes. Jesus seemed to have understood this principle of maximum contagion. So on this day, Meaning that Jesus had to make sure that the word was being spread all over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So soon, on this day, we now call Palm Sunday. He left behind places such as Nazareth, Capernaum, and Bethany. Yes, sir. And marched his followers into Jerusalem. He had the right message. Listen here. He had the right message. And Jerusalem was the right place to preach it. Yeah. Oh, y'all missed that. Yeah. He had the right message. Uh -huh. And Jerusalem was the right place to preach it. Yeah. If he wanted to reach the widest possible name? audience. Uh -huh. Watch this, Sister Mays. I know you're watching. We can discover something about the people of Jerusalem. As we look at Palm Sunday narrative in Matthew, the story boils down to an encounter between two groups of people. Some in the crowd knew who Jesus was and have heard many stories about him. When Jesus rolled into Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday, this first group responded by crying out, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, However, there were others in Jerusalem that day who had no idea who Jesus was. They were probably the overwhelming majority of residents and religious pilgrims in the city. Yes, sir. And their response was not to line his path with palm branches or garment-laden welcome mats. Their response was dismissive and full of contempt. Who is this? I got to digress one more again. Watch this. You can tell how folks feel. You can tell the mood that they're in. Just by the tone of their voice. Can I give you an example? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Brother Greg. Yes. Good morning, sir. No, not like that. <laughs> Good morning, Brother Greg.
what it's going to be like. So by the tone of these folks in Jerusalem, they wanted to know, who is this? Who is this? Let me say it like y'all say it. Who is this? This new preacher up here, who is this? <laughs> who can think he is? <laughs> but on the other hand, on the one hand, this former tax collector. So there were people who were laying their garments on the ground, tearing off branches from trees to create a kind of red carpet arrival for the man they believed to be the Messiah, the Son of God, or the latest, the one they thought might be the Son of David, an earthly king who would overthrow the Roman reestablishment. Then reestablished Israel yeah. to its former glory yeah. as it was in the days of David and Solomon. These were the people who were making all the noise and creating an uproar. They were welcoming the change they thought the Lord's arrival was about to create. Everybody had a misconception. Yeah. Because they labeled Jesus as king. They had this misconception that their king was going to ride in Jerusalem on a white stallion. Hello, somebody. Let me put it in 2024 terms. They were hoping, they were hoping that he was going to ride in to Norristown. In a limo <laughs> with an escort of the Norristown Police Department. But here comes Jesus, your Lord and my Savior. Here he comes, riding on a donkey. This is supposed to be your king? Who is this? Who is this imposter? Riding and coming in here like this. But Matthew said, this is Jesus. While others were still saying, who is this? Let me bring this to a close and just tell you. I can hear Jesus saying it just like this. You don't know who I am, do you? I can hear Jesus saying this side on this morning. You don't know? Who I am. But I hear the Lord telling us that He is somebody. I hear the Lord saying to us, just in case you rode into Jerusalem this morning, I gotta tell you this that Jerusalem had 12 gates going into the city. It's a, it's a known fact that everybody didn't travel in the same day. But you, 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 you might have gone through a gate that you didn't know anything that was going on on that side of town. But Jesus was saying to them when they said, who is this? Jesus said, I'm going to tell you who I am. And I want to just give you a glimpse of what Jesus was telling everybody. Jesus said, said it just like this. 
He says, sign on. I ask you, are you asking this who I am because you don't know him? But I hope you know him this morning. But I hear Jesus say, I am the Son of God. I am the architect of the whole creation. I am the victor over sin. I am the victor over hell. I am the victor over the grave. wonderful counselor and the mighty God of Israel. I hear you can stop saying that he is the rose of shepherd. Mr. Wolfbrook was saying that he's the living of the die. I hear Brother James Sanders saying he's the fairest of 10,000. But I tell you that he's the lamb of God that took away all of my sins.
some of them stood up and they said, surely this was the Son of God. I ain't got no right.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these palms. We ask God that you will bless them. Bless the recipients of them. And help us to understand and know that God on this Palm Sunday, we're going to wave our palms and let the world know that you are first and foremost in our lives. God, we love you and we thank you and we love you for doing what you have done just for us. But God, we do understand and know that as we receive our palms, God, we continue to say Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you for what you did with us. Thank you for what you're doing for us. We ask your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name, now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, who is Jesus the Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest with us and abide with us now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you. You are dismissed. You will receive your promise at the end of the door of the church. The young man is going to distribute them as they see.